Hey guys, my name is Radic and I'm your TA for 1B03 and if you're in 1BB3, the macroeconomics section, this, uh, this video actually still pertains to you because this is chapter 3, so it's the same in both books. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about trade and specialization. We're going to be talking about trade and specialization, absolute comparative advantage, um, opportunity cost, uh, law of comparative advantage, and the production possibilities frontier. So let's start off with trade and specialization. So why do people decide to trade and specialize? Well, people decide to depend on others for goods and services because it actually overall increases uh, the quality of life. Trade and specialization focus on economies of scale. Um, so economies of scale in microeconomics refers to the cost advantage that a business obtains due to expansion. There are factors that cause a producer's average cost per unit to fall as the scale of output increases. Economies of scale is a long-run concept and refers to the reduction in unit cost as the size of a facility and the usage levels of outputs increase. And um, right now that's kind of mumbo jumbo, don't worry about it. At the current time we will explore this later on. Just uh, familiar, familiarize yourself with the concept of economies of scale because we will be throwing that at you. So um, when people specialize, they get better at what they are doing. Um, another reason is they reduce their costs only by focusing on equipment needed to produce one good or do one specific service. Uh, this brings us to people having an absolute and comparative advantages. So these two words, absolute and comparative, what are they? All right, so absolute advantage refers to the ability of a party, like an individual, a firm, or a country, to produce more of a good or service uh, than competitors using the same amount of resources. And that's the key thing, the same amount of resources. So that could be inputs, that could be time, that could be any, any of the above, land, labor, or capital. Um, since absolute advantage is determined by a simple comparison of labor productivities, um, it is possible for a party to have no absolute advantage in anything. Um, in this case, when there is no absolute advantage, um, according to the theory of absolute advantage, no trade will occur with the other party. So there has to be an absolute advantage um, present. So comparative advantage. Now, the law of comparative advantage says that two countries or parties such as firms or, or uh, individuals can both gain from trade if, in the absence of trade, they have different relative costs um, for producing the same goods. Uh, even if one country is more efficient in production of all goods, absolute advantage, it can still gain by trading with, uh, with a less efficient country as long as they have different relative efficiencies. Now, in both cases, we have to remember the key word here is different relative efficiencies. So the rule here is with trade, we can increase the pie of goods and services. So what does this mean? Um, we'll look at a production possibilities frontier. Now, what is a production possibilities frontier? Well, you should really know because you should have read the chapter. Um, but a production possibilities frontier is sometimes also called a production possibilities curve or a production transformation curve. Um, this is a graph that compares the production rates of two commodities that share the same factors of production. Uh, the PPF curve shows um, the specified production level of one commodity that results given the production level of another. So it's kind of a trade-off curve, right? On the X and Y axes, we have two different goods, right, that use the same factors of production. And that can be just like even uh, time of the day, um, equipment, land, labor, right, and capital. So it assumes the maximum poss possible efficient use of resources for, for a maximum possible production of both commodities. So when we see a PPF, we will be on the curve. We won't be inside the curve. That's, that's the assumption of the PPF. We're assuming that all factors of production are employed. Um, a period of time is specified as well as the production technologies. Either com a commodity compared can be a good or service. So it doesn't just have to be two goods on the X and Y axes, it can be two, uh, two services. So say that you're at home, you can either be vacuuming or you could be cutting the grass, right? If you spend all your time vacuuming in the day, say you have eight hours in the day to do all your house chores and you spend eight hours of the day cutting the grass, you're gonna have absolutely no time to vacuum. Now, the other thing that we can do is we can divide it up between four and four hours Right, so you have four hours to cut the grass, four hours 
to uh, to vacuum or the other extreme which will be it would mean that we're on the other point of the axis um, you can spend all your time vacuuming um, I'll show you a couple graphs to make this easier um, so da -da -da. when we decide to specialize and trade the aggregate PPF moves out and away from the origin so the uh, production possibilities frontier or the curve it bows out and away from the origin we're actually able now to produce a greater aggregate quantity of goods and services. Um, with trade we can achieve a combination that was previously unobtainable. This combination before was outside of the PPF. So now let's look at a couple graphs. Say that uh, myself, Radic, I'm good at making wings and let's say uh, Rob is really good at making beer. Now um, in my little world, in my little country here, um, I can either make 32 wings in a day or I can make 8 bottles of beer in a day. Now, when I sit down to, uh, to watch the big game of whatever sort, I don't want to just have beer and I don't want to just have wings. So I need some sort of combination of the two. Now, in my little world, um, I can make a combination of uh, 4 bottles of beer and I can make a combination of 16 wings. Now in Rob's world, he likes beer and wings as well, and he likes to consume beer and wings while watching the big game. Um, now he's better at making beer and wings. He can actually either make 24 bottles of beer in a day, or he can make 48 wings in a day. Now he derives no utility, he has no satisfaction of just drinking beer while he's watching the big game, and he derives no satisfaction just eating wings while watching the big game. So now, if Rob and I decide to trade and specialize, we can achieve greater amounts of beer and wings. Now, with trade, if Rob and I trade, and we specialize in one thing, um, I can consume 13 wings and 5 bottles of beer, and with trade, he can consume 27 wings and 13 bottles of beer. So both both of our aggregate consumption has gone up. We are now outside of our original PPF when we did not have trade. So the proposed trade between Rob and I offers each of us a combination of wings and beer that would be impossible in the absence of trade. Um, now in the one panel I get to consume more beer and more wings and Rob does as well. Okay, so let's look at the last part of this chapter, the last big topic, it's opportunity cost. So let's recap a bit. We have gone through absolute advantage, which is the producer that requires a smaller quantity of inputs to produce a good is said to have an absolute advantage in producing that good. The comparative advantage, the producer who gives up less of other goods to produce a good has a smaller opportunity cost of producing that good is said to have a comparative advantage in producing it. And the gains from specialization and trade are based not on absolute advantage, but rather comparative advantage. When each person specializes in producing the good for which he or she has a comparative advantage, the total production in the economy rises. So, opportunity cost. It's the cost of an, any activity measured in terms of the best alternative foregone. It is the sacrifice related to the second best choice available to someone who has picked among several mutually exclusive choices. It is a key concept in economics. It has been described as expressing the basic relationship between scarcity and choice. The notion of opportunity cost plays a crucial part in ensuring that scarce resources are used efficiently. Thus, opportunity costs are not restricted to monetary or financial costs. The real cost, or outputs foregone, lost time, pleasure or any other benefit that provides utility should be also considered an opportunity cost. So basically, opportunity costs is the cost of some item which is foregone to get that item. So say that we go to work, we can forego the utility of having the day off. Work is traded for leisure time. Money is traded for goods and services. In a barter economy, other goods or services are traded for other goods and services. 
So that is the basic idea of opportunity cost. Now, in the next chapter, we'll be exploring uh, supply, demand, scarcity, shortages, surpluses, and just for the fun of it, we will look at the Vicky Mendoza uh, diagonal. The Vicky Mendoza diagonal. That'll be fun. Alright guys, my name is Radic. I'm your TA for 1BO3. I hope this video was helpful. Cheers.